Hey guys, today I'm going to start going over the basics of installing uh, your own sound system in your FG. Uh, the how to of you know speakers, amplifiers, subwoofers, all that sort of thing. So in this video, I'm going to cover uh, the basics of putting wiring an amplifier in. Uh, so that you can still use your ICC and your steering wheel controls and all that sort of thing uh, to control, to uh, plug an iPad in or an iPod in, that sort of stuff, still have that functionality. So this video will be going over how, what, what to do and how to do uh, installing an amplifier so that you've got, you can put your own speakers in and have louder, you know, higher quality sound but still maintain that level of functionality and ease over your uh, car sound system. So some basic things you're gonna need for this, for this job are wiring kit to be able to wire your amplifier up to your battery and to be able to ground it correctly. Uh, fuse, fuses for the amp uh, depending on how many amplifiers you have, you probably you want more than one, more than one fuse, one per amplifier. Uh, some RCA leads or adapters. If you're installing more than one amp, you might want uh, to get something like these. These are uh, splitters. They split the signal coming out of the line converter into two separate signals. That way, you could wire more than one amp with a line converter. This thing is your line converter. What this does is it takes the signal from the wires that are normally running from your head unit to your speakers and it changes that signal into RCA which can then be plugged into your amplifiers and the amplifiers then amplify your, amplify your signal and then you use your speaker wire to run that signal back to your speakers and you now got higher quality, nice loud audio. So the first thing you want to do is disconnect your battery and work out where your power lead is actually going, going to go um, through your engine bay. I've got mine just running behind the fuse box here, around the side of the, uh, around the, side of the coolant reservoir, and then I'm using this little rubber grommet to get through the firewall. This comes up um, just inside the footwell, the driver's side footwell. So I'll go around the uh, inside of the car and show you that. So as you can see, up inside the uh, back of the footwell here, that rubber grommet comes through. I've got a power lead coming out of there, uh, just through the footwell there. It's just hanging out for ease, so it's easy to see there. And then I've got it running into the trim there, and through the trim, down the side of the car and into the boot. Uh, if you don't know how to remove the trim, check uh, the video I've got up on how to remove the trim on the inside of the FG, otherwise we can keep going. Next you need to find a 12 volt source that's only on when the car when the car has the ignition turned on. So what I mean by that is when you turn the key from off to power, you want the you want to find a cord somewhere up here that actually does that, that turns on. Because without that, without this signal, without this power cable running all the way to the boot and plugging into your amp, your amplifier is just going to run 24-7 and flatten your battery within a couple of hours because it's going to continuously be on. So once you've found a 12-volt uh, 12 volt, uh, 12 volt lead or cord, whatever, so once you've found a 12-volt power source that only turns on when the car is on, you want to splice that into it and then run that that down the same direction that you've got your uh, got your power lead going. Next, you're going to pull off your door card. Now you can choose to only do two doors: do right right hand side and the left hand side on the front or on the back, either one you want to choose. Or you can choose to do all four. I've done all four, so I've got the signal from the rear speakers, the rear lines, running to the subs, and I've got this chant the uh, signal from the front running to the amplifier for the speakers. So what you want to do is pull the uh, pull the doors off, and you're going to find the cords that normally the cords that normally run to the speakers. 
So if you're if you're running stock sound system, you'll find two little cords that run straight into your stock speakers. These these are the signal that you want to cut, you want to tap into to uh, connect your line converter and change the signal from this line to uh, RCA. So pretty much cut these cables, work, obviously work out which one is positive, which one's negative. General rule of thumb for negative is that it's the cable with the line through it. So in this car, uh, there's, I think it's green, orange, black, and gray, I think it was. Uh, there's just the solid color is your positive, and your negative is generally a white with a with the stripe through it that matches the color of its uh, partner cable there. So you want to cut these cables, both of them, off your speaker, and then you're going to wire in some speaker cable to them. You know, um, the best method is to either use these crimps or to use soldering. I prefer soldering, but because my sound system is still halfway done, I've only got crimps at the moment. So what you're going to do is you're going to get that speaker wire, and it's going to run all the way from this from the door into your car and then all the way down to the boot or under the passenger side seat wherever it is you've chosen to put your line converters. So once you've got your PAL cable and your remote cable all the way into the boot what you want to do is now get your fuse and you want to actually put your fuse in the boot so your power cable, your cable kit will probably come with a cable that's incredibly long long enough to stretch the whole length of the car and then probably some more which is good so you want to cut that cable then wire it into your uh, into your housing for your fuse put that in and then on the other end of it you're going to wire in uh, more power cable exactly the same way and that's going to be the power to your amplifier then you want to get your ground and get your ground cable and connect that to your amp as well and you want to run that and actually and secure that to somewhere on the body of the car that will actually ground it properly there is actually a ground point in the boot of the car, so I'll show you that as soon as I pop the boot open. Your remote cable, you can run your remote cable straight to your uh, amplifier, and it can plug in straight into your amp. Or, if you're going to run more than one amp, which is what I've done, you can get the remote cable and you can cut it in the boot, and then solder a couple more cables of the same size onto it, so that way you've got more than one remote line once you're in the boot. You can get to, can connect more than one uh, more than one amplifier to that, and you've got the exact same result. So now that you run your speaker cable that's connected to the line that is from the head unit all the way up to the uh, back of the car here, you're going to get it and you're going to wire it into the into the line converter. Now line converters generally come this this is just a cheap fifteen dollar one from JCar. I don't actually recommend using one like this. I've got some. And they're terrible. Half my sound system doesn't work right now because they've broken. They break incredibly frequently. And because they're not active line converters, they don't boost the signal very well. And they also pick up shitloads of extra interference from the engine, all that sort of stuff. So you end up with a lot of static and sometimes popping and crackling. You can have the sound system you can have the sound turned off and still as in not be playing any music and still be able to hear a uh, a bit of static through the speakers sometimes so these things these things will come with a left and a right channel so there'll be a positive and negative for your left and a positive and negative for your right plus two earths you can choose to earth these um, it does sometimes make a difference but I've not had a shitload of luck with uh, actually earthing them so what's gonna happen is you're gonna run your speaker wire that's connected to your the wires that you've tapped into up the front there from the head unit you're going to get that speaker wire and you're now going to wire the right hand side into the right hand side speakers and you're going to get the ones that you got from the left because you'll if that's how you've chosen to do it get the ones from the left and run the ones from the left and connect them to the left hand side speaker speaker wires on your uh, line converter. I do recommend using left and right because a lot of songs do actually come with left, separate left and right channels. Um, so you'll be getting stereo audio, which is a lot better. Even works better with the uh, subwoofers as well. I've found that um, if you're only using one channel per sub, you tend to lose a bit of uh, a bit of clarity and even even a bit of volume sometimes when you're not uh, using both channels 
to each uh, each amplifier. So once you've wired in your, your signals to your line converter, you'll then have, you then got your RCA plugs here. And what you're going to do is you're going to get your RCA cables and you're going to plug your RCA cables into your line converter. If I can do that with one hand. And then you're going to get your RCA cables and plug your RCA cable into your amplifier, just like that. So once your RCA cables are in your once your RCA cables are in your amplifier, you're then going to get your speaker wire and connect your speaker wire to the amp, and then run the speaker wire all the way back down. So far, we've brought the power in, we've brought the remote signal in, we've brought the line that needs converting from the head unit, we've wired it into the line converter, we've then plugged the line converter into the amplifier with the RCA cables. Now we need to get speaker wire connected to the amplifier and then bring it all the way back the same way you brought it you brought the line down to the boot and you're going to then wire that onto your speaker almost done now the only thing to do the only thing left to do now is to actually ground the amplifier all right so a good place to ground your uh, your audio equipment that i found is this point right here in the boot basically i pulled the uh, pulled the bolt out got my own bolt and washer and I've got a nut on the other side of the uh, on the other side of it there, and basically I've just wired all my amps into that. Made sure they've all got good terminals on them and everything, so they get held in place nice and tight, and that keeps everything uh, keeps everything really safe like that. So it's really easy to get to and really easy to do. So you just run your uh, earth from your amplifier to that part there and there's my two mono block amps on the back of the uh, box so once all that's done you've now got speakers wired into your amplifier in the back there by using that line converter to change the line from your head unit into RCA so it can be plugged into the amplifier and then the amp can then send that amplified signal back to your speakers. So you've now got louder speakers, better clarity, you can put in whatever speakers you want now, and you've still got control using your car sound system. Oh, I think I just broke, uh, I think I just broke YouTube. Yep, yeah I did. Now that, <clears throat> now that you've got everything wired up, you can reconnect your battery, turn your car back on, and you've now got control of your sound system through your head unit still. You can, can still connect your, uh, your iPod or your iPad, whatever, your phone, and you can still control your volume and all that sort of stuff with your steering wheel. You still change songs everything you still got full control of your uh, of your car with the head unit with the built-in stuff and you've still got the uh, iPod control and the iPad control but you've now got nice amplified signal from your uh, speakers unfortunately I couldn't actually show wiring the whole car and all that sort of stuff in this video because mine's already done but uh, if there's any volunteers in the North Queensland uh, Townsville area who haven't already upgraded their sound system and, uh, and want to do it with this method um, and don't mind having their car filmed, I, uh, I'd appreciate it if you uh, would, let, would do it with me so that I could actually film a, uh, a better quality version of this video so that people can not just see where the cords need to go but I can actually show them exactly how everything's done in detail. I hope this video has actually helped though. Um, most people don't know about line converters and that sort of thing so hopefully this is uh, hopefully this has given a few people ideas on how they can do their improve their FG sound system in the future. Alright guys
I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next FG Mods video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that sort of thing. Helps spread the love around. See yous. Love that you never started